Okay, so we covered the uh, narrow beam mono energetic case, right? We got the equations, uh, but then I am showing this plot, right, which has one of the axes to be photon energy, the other is your linear attenuation coefficient, and this is done for different materials. So, we covered a single slab or when you have multiple slabs stacked together right and then we covered mono energetic case <laughs> that is it has only one energy that is coming through. So, then I go on to show this and you notice that uh, there are multiple energies and the mu is actually a function of energy right. So, uh, it just go back to uh, uh, brush up the interactions that we talked about right photoelectric effect Compton effect and we said that time that intuitively one would expect if it is going with high energy right it will not interact much it will come out the other direction that is what we kind of uh, we put the direction directly proportional to right. So, what does that tell that means the the, the signal loss right the photon energy is not reduced whatever goes in comes out without much interaction in the interaction if it is photoelectric it gets absorbed. So, energy is lost right the h mu's are lost and that which is your attenuation. So, clearly this says that if I give send x-ray energy that are on the higher energy side then the difference between the different material bone or muscle or fat right the difference between them reduces just join this relate this back to when I say difference have different materials and the difference what concept should come to your mind contrast. So, the inherent contrast right between bone muscle and fat contrast in terms of their attenuation capability attenuation coefficient linear attenuation coefficient reduces as you start to use higher energy. So, clearly you can see that you may want to use lower energies where the separation between them is larger, but then the challenge is you are using lower energy that that is good, but if you use too lower energy what is going to happen? Oh, you send the photons everything will get absorbed in the body I will not get much it will attenuate it completely then I will not have any signal to detect. So, there is always this problem right. So, if it is too small yes the separation between them the inherent contrast could be exploited, but then it will get attenuated and you will not get any photons to do the measurements right. Whereas, if it is too large if it is a high energy then the attenuation will be less. So, you can start to get the photons on the other side through transmission but then there will be minimal interaction. So, you will not really be able to interrogate and differentiate between the different tissues. So, the take home message in this slide is, this is a very powerful slide mu is a function of energy. So, the material when you say a material has a uh, attenuation coefficient it it is given that it is not just one value it has a attenuation coefficient at that particular energy level. Okay, so, that is becoming the the one of the additional variables in. So, in reality so, what we covered we had a narrow beam case mono energetic and then we talked about uh, when you have one material and then you have inhomogeneous material right slabs. So, now what we need to appreciate this that means, we need to update our equations to account for this guy right. So, now what we will do is narrow beam poly energetic photons that is when you have the photons come by right. What is the x-ray tube doing? Bremsstrahlung. So, it your what are you getting? You are actually getting spectrum right S of E different number of photons each photon having different energy level that is what you are actually sending in. What we covered just now is mono energetic. So, we just did H mu and done with right, but now instead of saying n photons go in instead of that we should be able to say 
there is a s of right the spectral spectral lines remember n1 photons at energy 1 n2 photons at energy 2 right so s of e right number of photons at different energy levels that is going in a spectral line is going in right so when an incident photons are poly energetic with the spectrum e s of e right so instead of sending one photon with one energy in and me receiving it on the other side now i have a spectrum of energy so n1 photons at one level n2 photons at another energy level so i'm sending this whole spectrum into the body different energy photons with different number of photons with different energy levels right so it's going in now the question is if this goes in what what is the uh, attenuation how does the material interact with the spectrum so that you can comment on what is the s of e that is coming out the mono energetic case we said n photon goes in n dashed comes out and n dashed minus n is your minus small n which is lost and then we wrote the uh, at a fundamental law right so here s of e goes in s of e dashed comes in or s dashed of e dashed comes in whichever so so now we need to relate what spectral line that is coming out going through the body in terms of the material property which is your mu but now we will denote that as mu as a function of e so each uh, energy has the material behaves differently so mu is a function of e okay so s of e is the spectral at any location s0 of e is a spectral that is sent in right n equal to n naught remember so similar so we are just updating that with s of e equal to s naught of e equal to exponential decay the same law holds good but now instead of writing just mu delta x we are writing mu of e so it is a function so for each energy level this holds good so when you send a spectral we will pretend that the mate is each one is behaving independently so net sum is what you are getting okay so so it's a direct extension of your mono energetic now treat this as a poly energetic case is nothing but same behavior for mono energetic but you have multiple energies right which is given denoted by s of e spectral lines you can also write your intensity counterpart so i is whatever goes in right s of e dashed and your number of photons so this is your number of photons spectral line gives you number of photons at that energy level e dashed into the energy of each photon right at that level so that is your same definition that we did before only contextualizing here exponential of mu of e dashed that particular e dashed that you are considering of course it is over delta x the slab even now has only one right we are not really worried about that right now we are taking one slab but what happens when it is hit by multiple energies or poly energetic source okay so now we can extend that to heterogeneous case what do we mean by heterogeneous case this mu right depends on the x also remember that's what we did so there is slab 1 slab 2 slab 3 or at x1 you have mu 1 x2 you have mu 2 right so when it goes in we updated that equation now we could do the same equation that we had for mono energetic heterogeneous case but only now we will have to update this mu with energy so mu of x comma e you go back and look what we did before in mono energetic heterogeneous case we would have just denoted it by mu of x that is the attenuation is a function of which material you are sitting in slab 1 and slab 2 are all stacked along the x direction so when you move along x direction your mu changes that is what we denoted by heterogeneous before now not only that we are saying it is also a function of energy right so we will update the equation make it more complete by substituting mu of x comma e so your s of x comma e at any x 
what is com the spectral line that is present at a particular energy the spectral line at x is nothing but the spectral line that that goes in after exponential decay until that point 0 to x of mu of x dash and e okay so this is a more complete version and of course you can write the counterpart of the intensity by taking for number of photons into energy per photon that is this denotion and updating this with the two variables that are there clear so as much as it looks complete right you can already sense that this becomes complicated complicated at least from a, a mathematical tractability to write all this and uh, visualize it is it is becoming uh, cumbersome let me put it that way so then what do we do we will say that okay this is complete but you know for convenience maybe this is not needed what we could do is use our effective energy concept right we did that uh, before so if you have multiple energies instead of doing it for all energies we could say this instead of calling it as a spectrum we could reduce the spectral lines s of e to a, a single energy case by finding the equivalent right so essentially average of the spectral n1 into e1 plus n2 into e2 by the thing right we we talked about this in fact we did an integral so equivalent is what we we talked about right so if you do that then you get the same expression for mono energetic case the fundamental law in the previous lecture you can use that to a very big deal without much loss in generality but our from analysis perspective this is how you you uh, you know update your variables to account for the mu being both a function of uh, material and the response of the material to particular energy level okay so um, let us quickly move on so much for narrow beam case now we will move on to broad beam case again before I put the slide uh, sketch recall or at least try to make an effort to see how this may look when I say narrow beam I mentioned narrow in some context what is that context if you recall that broad beam case you should be able to quickly draw a sketch of the broad beam case so recall broad beam case narrow beam case we said the detector size of the detector with respect to the beam width that is what is your whether it defines narrow or not so in broad beam case you have a source where the photons are shot this is much larger dimension than your detector in narrow beam case the source was this size the black lines that you see right detector so it was about the same size as your detector that is how we used the narrow beam case to define attenuation so if you send it send it through a slab of delta x that remains the same here what comes out at the detector the number of photons is less than the number of photons that was going in and therefore that loss is essentially what is characterized as due to attenuation of the material and we came up with a model look at in broad beam case what you have first is because this is larger than the detector size this is broad beam but more importantly when you send it through the slab right of same delta x what is it that you are going to detect now Ah, vividly you can see here what you are going to detect is going to be still that is coming only through its line of sight however along with that from a signal point of view along with that you are also going to get something that is coming at an angle and hitting remember the two effects photoelectric effect and Compton scattering so photoelectric effect is the desired guy so I would uh, would be happy if we detect only everything along this line right so it's something that comes through the material so the reduction is 
the number of photons that is detected if it is less than what is sent in and it is lost along this path then that is fine I can then talk about the attenuation along this line of the material but now notice in the broad beam case not only you are hitting the slab at multiple locations but you are able to detect only with the detector width so signal is lost so you are irradiating or right you are ionizing the material here for no reason not only that whatever you are measuring now also has compton scattered detectors photons right so it turns out that in this scenario whatever model we developed so far to characterize this interaction and attenuation does not hold good why because uh, it turns out that we premised that what you receive in the detector is less than what is sent through and that loss is proportional to the material property right and then we came up the exponential model it turns out here that sometimes the detector is actually capturing more photons than what entered in front of it so <laughs> you could have more photons here than what sent in so what is the question of loss right i mean strictly use what we covered so far we would say loss is you, you will have detector will have less photons than what is incident and that loss is proportional to attenuation here what happens is your detector could actually have same or more photons than what entered the slab in front of it why because there are other photons which are compton scattered that also come and hit the detector so whatever is loss here is not the only loss you are actually getting extra photons from the other locations so in this scenario if you have a detector have more photons than what you sent in in front of it then the loss is there is no loss or at least we, we cannot say that that is due to the material property in front of it alone right so attenuation concept and all the models that we derived does not hold good for broad beam case not only that when you do that you are getting if you look at the energy here even if it is a mono energetic case right all the photons here are of the same energy what will be the energy at the detector right think about it what will be the energy at the detector will it be the same energy photons or will you have a mix okay think about it we'll just clarify that so more energy detected than predicted by mono energetic narrow beam analysis why is it more energy oh because you have the scattered scattered energies that are coming in the compton scattered photon right that brings in some energy h mu dash that one is also detected and therefore more energy is detected than predicted by your mono energetic case uh, what is always polyenergetic two things are poly the detector right is going to always detect ha, is going to have many energies why right because the clue is here you have compton scattered and it is all different scattering angle it can come so go look back at compton scattering you will notice the interaction is it will come it will change path deflected at some theta scattered at some theta and goes the the energy proceeds with a reduced energy h mu dash so that means if you have different sc compton scattering photon each one will be at a different energy but lower than the h mu that came in right because it is compton scattered photon so the detector is not only capturing the photon with energy that is coming through it is also detecting lower energies because it is capturing the compton scattered photons and that's what the detector is polyenergetic so the whatever is you are collecting in the detector you are going to have many energies even though you have sent only mono energetic all the photons were sent with the same energy you are going to get polyenergetic so uh, that means you have many energy levels but then 
the Compton scattering that are coming in are all reduced energy, right? And so, if you take the average energy, the average energy is going down because you are adding new photons, the Compton scattered photons, which are having lower energy. And so, essentially, what happens is the average energy or the effective beam energy is reduced. If something is reduced, we call here, we call as beam, we are characterizing the beam, broad beam case, narrow beam case. So, beam we represent in terms of the photons, right. So, beam softening means if you characterize the beam, describe the uh, beam as energy packets, then beam softening implies that the energy is reduced. So, the process of beam you send HMU like that is the average energy that you sent in, the average energy you, you detect is less, lower energy than what you sent. So, this process is called as beam softening. Uh, if you are wondering if something rings a bell, we did see something along these lines which we did not go in too much detail in the chapter for artifacts, at least the introduction when we talked about artifacts. Right, it was not beam softening, it was actually the opposite effect, a beam hardening. Go look at the artifact that uh, was presented in the introduction, and we said it is due to beam hardening artifact. So, now with beam softening, of course, we will talk about that further when we do the instrumentation, CT, and all those things. Uh, but you can already get a feel for where all it is coming from. So, this is beam softening. What is beam softening? Oh, the energy that is detected is lower, right, is reduced. Then we call it as beam softened or beam softening. What could be beam hardening? Ah, if my energy is average energy shifts to greater, right, then you could think about it as beam hardening. So, we will talk about that specifically when we get there, but just so that you know, right, all of these are um, very subtle, but very physics oriented. So, now you know what is meant by beam softening and where it comes from, okay. So, it is now, uh, um, yeah, just to complete this part, that means when we do our instrumentation, we better be careful to reduce this effect right that that is your Compton scattering should not come in. So, typically we have detector collimation. So, we will try to reduce the non normal incidence. Okay. So, we will do two things we will try to when we do the instrumentation and when we do the imaging uh, we will try to make sure that we do not have a broad beam case that is we do not eliminate the patient while we can only detect over a small area. And we will try to minimize the Compton scattering using what is called as collimation. We will get to that. So, this is a take home message. Even though broad beam we covered, essentially it is not nice, it is not amenable to the, the way we built our case for narrow beam. So, we will end up exploiting engineering the narrow beam case, right, and which is reasonable. We, we can, we have control over the source, we have control over the detector and therefore, the, the aperture. Okay. So, we will make this jump. Uh, what we talked so far about radiation, ionizing radiation, two types particulate, electromagnetic and the type of interaction each one of them has with the material and we have come a long way. After that, we identified electromagnetic radiation interaction with tissue is of importance to us in imaging systems. The particulate radiation with material was useful for your x-ray tube, more specifically elect electrons, particulate when we said we talked about only charged electrons in, in our context. And uh, when we had this electromagnetic radiation interaction with the body, we talked about two photoelectric effect and uh, Compton scattering, but all of this you look at the material progressively that we have developed, 
we have always looked at it from the imaging point of view that is your output image how close what do you what do you get at the output image and the intent being the output image should be as close as possible to the underlying f of x g of x should be close to f of x comma y that is what we have positioned so far in that context we understood the what is a signal what could be uh, desirable what is a noise and uh, so on and so forth but more importantly because human beings are involved right we want to image the body human body we want to clearly have some ways and means to also describe understand study characterize um assess the effect on the body what we talked about the interaction is effect on the signal that is coming out or the noise but what happens to the effect on the body due to this electromagnetic radiation right that is something that we uh, need to study or at least understand because that is part and parcel of the modality because the image quality and patient safety goes hand in hand so therefore this topic of radiation dosimetry deals with essentially understanding the what this electromagnetic radiations does to the body right that is the key in this aspect key aspect in this uh, but we will this is a whole field uh, mostly this is very important uh, if you are from uh, perhaps uh, uh, medical physics background right um where typically in a hospital you will have medical physicists in a, in a ca cancer institute radiation therapy you have um uh, a, a medical physicist who will be able to carefully study and uh, help the the surgeons when they do the uh, procedures or radiation therapy they will come up with calculations and make sure that it is the safe limit okay S but our course this is majorly tailored towards uh, uh, engineering and therefore we will not really go too much into the details however we will flag few key terminologies and concepts concepts which you should know as a biomedical engineer if you are to deal with the medical imaging system you should also know these terms and be comfortable with that and therefore it, we are in some sense we are just uh, 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 not even tip of the iceberg there it's not even tip it's the pointed tip it's very 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 limited prick that's what we are going to do okay but that itself hopefully should trigger you to think about the big picture and relate this concepts to the engineering side of what we do about imaging systems so we'll introduce uh, terminologies so radiation dosimetry considers the effect of radiation with the interacting media so when i say that already without going into the details recall what do you know somehow if you are sending the electromagnetic radiation there are two things that are happening and the desirable thing we talked about is getting absorbed right photoelectric effect so getting absorbed means energy is deposited into the body right and what are these radiations or oh, these are ionizing radiations what do you mean by ionizing radiations ah uh, it has enough energy to ionize hydrogen right that is our uh, context we said anything that can ionize hydrogen is ionizing radiation so in in this background that we have what does it do to the body we already know it is ionizing it is depositing energy into the body through photoelectric effect of course you also have sometimes the electron can move right the incoming energy can hit an electron the electron can move remember all the sketch about uh, auger electron about uh, you know compton scattering we did all that so that could also happen you could also get characteristic x ray also characteristic radiation so that means uh, you have the body that is absorbing the energy and also it is passing through reduced energy in different directions 
some of which can also undergo photoelectric and get absorbed elsewhere right so the idea is this interaction what does it do the do to the body it causes ionization right it gets absorbed in the uh, atoms it, so the the dose is deposited this energy is deposited in the uh, body okay so that means we need to talk about how all can we characterize measure make judgment or make basically guideline whether something is safe or not how do we do that so we need several metrics to capture this the interaction is this you know that but how do we look at it how do we measure it how do we uh, recommend what to be used that we need to invoke few concepts and definitions so uh, more specifically we will look at these four and we'll try to do it in a these are all probably one slide per concept that's all it is okay at least that's the level at which we are going to cover in this course but i'll try to uh, list out what it is but then you could relate it to the physics that we covered so far so what is exposure let's start with exposure so exposure plainly it says measured in terms of number of ions produced in a specific volume of air by electromagnetic radiation but just to give a brief what do we know oh this radiation do ionization that means hydrogen is ionized if if hydrogen atom can be made to a ion right uh, that energy is considered ionizing radiation the effect is ionization so air has lot of hydrogen so essentially if you pass electromagnetic radiation through air you can have ionization so in in some some ways each individual may change each patient may change right each one is different but x ray source i send out so first i need to know what is sent out that is going to hit the body can we control that can we understand that can we capture that if we can capture that then we will find out what happens when that interacts with the body because each individual is different right so we need to have some ways so that we can do it in a controlled fashion to study the effect of whatever goes in with the body right so exposure in some sense does that so you can have a x ray tube that is coming out sending out photons it is going to ionize air so what happens if i make a chamber of air and pass this through oh that air chamber is going to get ionized okay so air chamber that can get ionized means there are ions so if i have a voltage drop what is going to happen oh the ions is going to move across right if it moves across you are going to have current so essentially what you can do is i can based on the current i can say how much ionization is taking place right that is why here it is mentioned exposure is measured in terms of number of ions produced okay in specific volume of air by electromagnetic radiation so essentially i can make a, a controlled volume of air right air chamber i can send out the x ray the ionizing radiations and uh, measure the current so amount of current is proportional to the exposure amount of ionization capability right how much this source can ionize oh if it is air at certain temperature you know, uh, calibrated volume this is the ionizing potential so it is exposure is just the question of it is measuring the powerfulness potential right what is it that is coming out what is cap what it is capable of you can think about in those terms okay um so it has a si unit as coulombs because you have charges right per kilogram more commonly it's roentgen r right there is this uh, conversion of 1 coulomb per kg equal to 3876 roentgen so now you may wonder okay that is exposure i am not really worried about exposures that is saying the capability in air right what i am interested is what happens to my body when when i am exposed to this h mu if i am exposed to this x rays right what does it happen to the body 
that is what i am interested i am interested in dose so um before we get to that one comment on exposure is like most other things it also obeys what we call as the inverse square law that is if i move more towards the source or away from source right so the distance between the source and where you are measuring right that one where you are exposing right that has a inverse relationship so x at a location d will be x at a location 0 right that at the source divided by d square d is, d is the separation between the source and the uh, wherever you are measuring okay so exposure decreases with the distance as inverse square law so without knowing much right if you have a uh, this is true even for radioactivity as we will see later if you have some radiation going on if you think there is radiation stay away it is going to be very beneficial because as you step away for every distance that you step the exposure goes down by square of that distance so the initial few steps that you make has a huge effect on whether you are going to be exposed or not so you have to always have a, a safe limit so if you have a warning x ray source stay away the the more you stay away you are going to gain disproportionately you are going to be safe disproportionately okay because of the inverse square law okay so um now the question is uh, okay I, i that's all fine exposure is fine but i am interested in what is going to happen to my body what is the dose that what is what how much of energy is going to be deposited into my body intuitively you know this has to depend on what so we talked about mu so much mu energy right so it depends on the material so i could have the same material i could expose the same sorry i could expose a material to a exposure and it will behave differently it will get a different dose than some other material so it's material dependent as well right so dose denoted by capital d is the energy deposited per unit volume so energy is in joules right volume so we do it with kg so si unit is gray most commonly you use rad rads okay so one gray is 100 rads so typical uh, exposure dose we deal with in in medical systems human body is about 1 uh, rad your dose your exposure we talked about two units right one is your coulombs per kg the other is roentgen so one roentgen will produce one rad that is the uh, typical accuracy um, that we do that is acceptable in medical imaging systems okay for dealing with human body okay so that is with respect to dose now we'll try to improvise this further make it little more you know uh, specific uh, to capture the, say this is this is kind of uh, very generic right so we need to uh, customize it a little more so for the degrees of accuracy required in biomedical dosimetry one roentgen yields one rad of absorbed dose in soft tissue okay uh, so this is all r- r- rule of thumbs right ball park that's all uh, why because when you say soft tissue you already saw soft tissue you could have bone fat muscle you already saw the differences right mu is different uh, in each of them so in some sense uh, you, even though you say soft tissue it's a it's a rough ball park right take it at that level so what did i mean by uh, some more customization okay karma why is it uh, so the, the, what we talked about is uh, absorbed right but if you think back what are the interactions that are possible one is absorbing the other is oh this energy is knocking off an electron giving the energy to that electron and the electron is now moving right oh that becomes a particulate 
E is moving with energy that can go do particulate interaction. That's where we left. We said even though electromagnetic radiation interaction with the tissue can generate electrons with the energy and that will have particulate interaction with material which we covered earlier is what we, we, we mentioned at that time. So, that means the apart from the dose that is absorbed right there is this other effect that is going to be because of this particle charge uh, electrons getting this energy and moving out. So, so karma is tightly related to dose but here when we talk about dose here it depends it, it is more related to the deposited into the electron specifically. So, karma is the energy deposited into the electrons of a material. Why is this important? I mean, why is this different and also important? Difference is now we are talking about energy deposited specifically into the electron. Why is that important? Because the electron now, if it is getting all this energy and it is going, now it is going to have an interaction of particulate with the material, right? That is going to have characteristic radiation that is potentially could have a Bramstra lung as well, right? That was the interaction that we studied for particulate. It could have both. So, it is slightly different from your energy absorbed. So, it has a units again dose. So, you have gray, but for all practical purposes, because in human body, when we you know when we talk about uh, uh, biomedical application at the diagnostic energies that are involved, the effect of uh, electron getting the uh, energy and it going having particulate like what we did in X-ray tube. X-ray tube is different, I mean, you know, at a higher energy level uh, that happened. Whereas, uh, for typical energies that we are talking in, that is going to go through the body, which is your diagnostic energies, your K is same as dose. Meaning, you are not going to have much effect because of the electron going with energy and causing further harm, okay. So, how do they do that? When used in air for calibration purpose, it is called as air karma. So, the same concept when applied in air, right, uh, what we did for exposure, right, so similar things. So, if you can do it in an air, then you can get what is called as K air. So, we can relate, right, in general K is greater than dose, clear, because you can have chain effect. But then, because some electrons can cause Bramstraw lung and uh, uh, energy is radiated away. So, but, but all this we do not really uh, worry about in our case, right in the body, ok. So, um, fine, so we talked about exposure, we talked about dose, we talked about dose with a specification of only if it is with electron, so that was karma. What we have not done is, we have not really related the exposure to the dose. We separately defined and we also intuitively know there should be some relation, right? What is that relation going to be? Somewhere it is a material property is going to determine the dose for a given exposure. That much was intuitive, but we did not strictly connect these two. These two will be connected based on what is called as F factor. So, we need to measure the exposure but then report dose that is the thing right. So, when we say oh this x-ray tube this is the exposure for this setting, but then when we have to report we will have to report so much dose is given to this patient. So, you see the problem. So, I can calibrate and say this source is going to, this is the exposure that you get out of this x-ray tube in this setting, whereas that is not of interest. We are interested about the patient. I want to know how much am I dosed. So, you may be able to calibrate that part and get uh, exposure, but then I have to report what is the dose. So, that there is a connection to relate these two which is called as F factor. The uh, F factor naturally it has to relate based on your material property exposure dose. So, exposure you have if you expose, if it has this much capability to ionize, how much is deposited, which is a dose? It is going to be a, a fraction. F is going to be the fraction and that depends on the material. Okay. So, F is nothing but this number here. What is this? Mu by rho. 
mu is your attenuation coefficient, rho is your density of the material, right? And this is your air calibration. So, you can essentially use this is the unknown material, this is calibration air. So, exposure is calibrated in air. So, I could get my dose for uh, unknown material. So, what is mu is your mass attenuation coefficient. Okay. Uh, fine. So, what is of interest now? Okay. So, there is a relationship between F fact, I mean your exposure and dose which intuitively is related by some material property. More specifically, it is the attenuation per uh, rho. So, it is your mass attenuation coefficient that is going to determine. So, you have several tables in the um, are in different textbooks that we are using if you look at it. There are several uh, tables that give about exposure and dose for different materials, right. You can look at it. So, what we will uh, kind of wrap up is last, uh, uh, last but one is the dose equivalent. What do we mean by dose equivalent? So, we understood dose, we understood exposure we understood dose and we connected those two as well using f factor. But then what is dose equivalent? Dose equivalent says so far we have only talked about energy absorbed is dose, ionizing radiation, interaction with the material, absorption, electrons that are moving, right? So, dose or kerma, but we never really, so it is all general, right? We could use that for anything. But then there is some more specific city that needed because there is a there is a, a lot of uh, inputs knowledge that the effect of radiation actually depends on the source of radiation. Meaning we are exposed to radiation, right? So there is this cosmic rays. You have so much cell phone radio frequencies are all around. So they, we are getting radiated, right? But not all of that are harmful or not all of them are equally harmful or equally safe, right? Some are more detrimental, more harmful, some are okay. So, clearly there is an effect that depends on the source of the energy, source of the radiation. For the same dose, if the radiation source is some radiation source could be more harmful than the others, okay? So, we need to capture that. So, dose equivalent essentially talks about that H is equal to dQ, okay. What is D? Your dose, H is your dose equivalent. So, what is this Q? That Q is your quality factor, it depends on the source of the radiation. So, Q is a quality factor and roughly Q is one for X-ray, gamma ray, electron. So, most of the medical imaging systems that we will cover, right the radiation involved in our medical imaging system, your quality factor is 1 means your dose and equivalent dose, dose equivalent are same, no big difference. But they can be very different. For example, you can have quality factor could be neutrons or protons or alpha particles. Look at this, so 20 times. So, that means what it is saying is your dose could be same, right? But the harmfulness will be more if that source, if the dose is coming from a alpha particle. And how much? Oh, it is 20 times. So, dose equivalent is 20 times if alpha particle is depositing the dose. So, origin of this source, right? The source, that the kind of source that has a effect. I mean, I say effect, we are talking about detrimental biological uh, side effects, okay. So, you could have, uh, I mean, we won't go too much, but why are people worried? Yeah, because you are ionizing this, there is a uh, risk associated and, uh, and it is known to have a carcinogenic, meaning cancer causing effect, okay. So, that is why, uh, you know, these are very important to understand and study. For Diagnostic purpose, we will not make much difference between dose and dose equivalent because quality factor is 1, 
okay uh fine dose equivalent so we have in systematic fashion we have come about calibration what is the exposure right we talked about the potential to cause ionization how much is coming in and then dose how much of that energy is deposited and then we connected exposure and uh, dose and then we said okay this much is fine but depends on what source it is your dose equivalent could be more um but you you think about it we also know it, it is material dependent so we have multiple organs we have multiple tissues so for all of what we covered so far if we have to be correct we'll have to report the dose in different tissues different organs separately right then it becomes cumbersome so a patient xyz is going we need to be able to talk about the dose that patient is getting exposed we, we otherwise it's going to be a chart it's going to be oh this is the patient in this patient uh, you know uh, 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 skull this is the thing uh, your heart this is the thing or even your soft tissue this is your fat so much is deposited so we'll have a, a chart right that becomes so it might be not um, so that is being re really homogeneous a, a homogeneous right because we know it is material dependent and material is changing throughout the body and therefore we'll have to calculate everything for each one of them i think in in principle yes you can that's the idea right i mean that's what is happening but practically i think it is easier to characterize dose that a patient is getting rather than all the different material compensated at different locations so we are more interested in reporting the effective dose what is effective dose depends on the tissue type right so effective dose is nothing but average a collection right effective dose measures the average effect of different tissue types so you give some weighting so hj is your dose equivalent right we didn't make a big difference between dose equivalent and source but for general purposes it is the dose equivalent w is the weighting factor for that organ because based on the tissue type right we could do that so in, in because of this effective dose concept we could say this patient had was given so much dose during last uh, imaging right oh we don't want to bring this patient again to do one more scan because dose will increase so we cannot we don't want to do the follow up every 3 days because we will probably give more dose so i mean all that is on an average based on the effective dose okay um so i guess uh, this is a a good point to stop uh, completing the radiation dosimetry most of this radiation dosimetry like i said is a separate field where typically a medical physics physicist position will be there in a in a imaging center or a hospital Uh, and they have to deal with all of these concepts day in and day out because the source is changing the patient is changing their history is changing the medical history of the patient is changing so they will have to do this customize this for uh, patient specific but for our purposes we will not dwell too much more on the radiation dosimetry beyond what we covered uh, in in this lecture So now it's time for us to move ahead having covered all the basic physics with respect to interaction and creating terminologies capturing uh, and having the models to capture the interaction now we will start with the first imaging modality that we want to cover which is going to be your projection radiography so we'll do that in the subsequent lecture thank you